sports fans and baseball fans. It's Sportsman Z. I got another uh, back to basics baseball game for you. Um, I've already put one up on the channel. That was the 1979 Phillies taking on the 1960 LA Dodgers. Uh, again, just a quick review if you're not familiar with back to basics baseball. It's uh, very inexpensive, seventeen dollars. You get a um, you get a split deck, which is right here, which is used to run the game engine, and there are no dice to roll, there are no charts to look at, and um, you get PDFs of pretty much every team in the history of baseball, pretty much. Um, I'm not sure how like recent they have, but they certainly have all the way back to the 1800s. And today we are going to play the 1980 Oakland A's, and they will be visiting the 1985 Chicago White Sox, a favorite of mine. Um, now, they do make PDFs, and the way that the game... Um, the, the way that a lot of people play the game is to just write in. They have score sheets where you can write in the ratings of all the players on the score sheet. And that's all you generally need to play the game. However, I do make my own cards because I just like doing that. I like having cards. Now, for the A's, you can see here's Ricky Henderson's card. For the A's, I hand wrote out these cards. And then I was like, why am I doing that? Why don't I just do a computer version? Like, you know, put them on in Word and then print them out. And so that's how the uh, White Sox come out. You can see this is Rudy Law's card because he will be leading off for the White Sox. So I have the, the cards with all their ratings on it just because I like to have cards in my hand. And um, so that's how we're going to go. You can see I don't have my usual, like, the big... Um, scoreboard from the um, from my iPad but I think that this is a little more intimate it allows me to get the camera closer to the field closer to the cards you can see I'm mean, hopefully you can see things a little better than when I have to you know raise the camera up to include the uh, scoreboard but I do have my score sheet right here hopefully you can kind of keep track there but um, anyway uh, let's get on with the game. We have um, the on the mound for the homestanding 1985 White Sox is going to be my main man, Floyd Bannister. Now, there were better starting pitchers on the team than Floyd Bannister, and there is his card right there that I have made based on his ratings in the, in the uh, PDF that I got for 1985. But Floyd Bannister was one of my favorite players when I was growing up and on the White Sox. So um, we're going to go with Floyd Bannister instead of, say, uh, Tom Seaver or Britt Burns. And pitching for the uh, A's, and by the way, Floyd Bannister in 1985 was 10 and 14. Um, and uh, do they have the ERA here? You know what? I didn't write the ERA on his card. Huh. But anyway, he was 10 and 14. I think his ERA was something like 465, something like that. Um, and uh, Rick Lankford was uh, 19 and 12 with a 326 earned run average. So he was much better, however. That was um, his ratings. I would assume his ratings are based on 1980 baseball, whereas Floyd Bannister's were based on 1985 baseball. And, um, the, you know, the further, the closer you get to now, uh, I think the more offensive baseball has become. So it's possible that 326 is not all that. In fact, Rick Langford is a B-rated pitcher. Now, they rate all the ratings are done on like a grade school uh, rating scale from A-plus to, uh, to F. And so if you're an A-plus, you're the best. And he was e only a B. 
and Bannister was a C. So anyway, let's get on with the game. I bored you enough with all of that. So let's go to Ricky Henderson. And it uh, starts off, he is batting against um, Floyd Bannister, who he said is a C. And so a C is a deep fly to center field, and there's one out, just like that. It's that simple. So the next batter is Wayne Gross. Wayne Gross against a C gets a fly out to center field. So their first two guys have flown out, and uh, that brings up um, Tony Armas. And Tony Armas against a C pitcher gets a fly out to left. So three fly outs. Um, two, and that would be what? Eight? Or wait a minute, center field is eight. So that's seven. Fly out to seven. And the A's get no runs in the first inning. And we go to the bottom of the first. And Rudy Law is going to be batting. And he is against a B pitcher. Against a B pitcher, he gets a line out to second base. Line out to four, one away. Uh, against a B pitcher for Harold Baines, the second batter, he gets a fly out to left field, and there is um, an asterisk after that, or a, uh, a um, uh, whatever, uh, like a, anyway, what it is, is it's basically a range check for the left fielder. So the left fielder is a range of A. So we'll flip another card and we look in the range section A and that is an out. So there are two down, I believe, right? Yep. And uh, that was a uh, fly out to right. And now we got Carlton Fisk up. And Carlton Fisk um, against a B pitcher gets a swing. We have our first swing of the day. And he is a batter D. And a batter D gets a single with an asterisk. Just means one ass and just one base. But that doesn't apply because there's nobody on. And that's going to be the first base hit. And the first hit allowed by uh, Lankford. And that brings up Ron Kittle. Ron Kittle against a B pitcher gets a swing. So we got another swing. And he is a batter D. And a batter D gets a single two asterisk. Nice. Lankford getting his butt handed to him right now all of a sudden. So we have runners at the corners with two down and Greg Walker, the first baseman, is up for the 1985 White Sox and against a B pitcher. He gets a swing and uh, he is a batter C and a C gets a deep fly to left field, but that's going to be an out and that is the third out and the White Sox are retired, although they do threaten there. And we go to the top of the second inning with Dwayne Murphy batting for the A's against AC pitcher. He gets a fly out to left. I love this. Fly out to seven. <laughs> I mean, no swings. There's no swings off of uh, the inimitable Floyd Bannister. And then uh, you've got Mitchell Page, the DH, today. And against a C pitcher, he gets a fly out to right field. Fly out to nine, and that brings up Dave Revering, the first baseman for the A's. Against the C pitcher, he gets a ground out to second base. Ground out to four, and uh, that's it. So the A's get nothing in the second. We go to the bottom of the second. We're moving right along here. Uh, Scotty Fletcher, the, sh the uh, second baseman for the White Sox. Against a B pitcher gets a fly out to right, and that's a range check, and he is an A, and the range check on an A is an out. So he flies out to right field, 
fly out to nine, one down. And we're, we've got Luis Salazar, Luis Salazar, the DH today for the 85 White Sox. Against a B pitcher, he gets a ground out to third base, but that's an error check. And we will get the um, error rating. Um, and he is an error there. Let's see, their third baseman is an error C. And that's going to be an out. So there are two down. He grounds out five to three. And that brings up Tim Hewlett playing third base today for the 85 White Sox against a B pitcher. He gets a ground out to short, but that is a range check. And the range uh, of the shortstop is um, a C. And if you look at the range for C, you've got an out. So Hewlett get, uh, bounces out five, or six to three. And no runs come across for the White Sox in the second. And we go to the top of the third. The A's will send up Dave McKay against Floyd Bannister, who is pitching a, uh, a, a perfect game right now. And against the C pitcher, he gets a strikeout. So uh, there is a K for um, McKay. A K for McKay. Um, Mario Guerrero is up and he is, uh, against a, uh, a C pitcher. He gets a swing. So that's the first swing for the A's and he is a batter D and a batter D gets a home run. If he's a C plus at home run, which he is not. Otherwise it's a double. So Guerrero gets a double. And that's the first hit allowed by um, Bannister. Maybe I uh, maybe I jinxed him. Brings up Mike Heath against a C pitcher. He gets a swing. That's the second swing for the A's. He is a batter D, and a batter D gets a double if uh, he is an A, B, or C on doubles, which he is not. Asterisk. So, um, and that's no matter what. So, he does get a hit. We've got runners at the corners with one out and Ricky Henderson up. The infield's going to play back against a um, C pitcher. He gets a swing. He is an A batter, which is bad news. And he gets a home run if he's a B at home run, which he isn't. But if he's not, he gets a double two. So, that will knock in a run. Um, Henderson with a double and one run coming in. Wayne Gross comes up against a C pitcher. He gets a swing and a, um, he is a B batter and he gets a walk if he's an A, B, C, or D at walk. And he is. So the bases are now loaded with only one out. That's trouble. That is a lot of trouble there for Mr. Floyd Bannister. That brings up Tony Armas. We're hoping for a double play here. Um, against a C pitcher, he gets a swing. And he is a batter B. And he gets a walk if he's an A or B at walk. And he is not. So I've done this. So... Um, Uh, let, all right, let's go to Dwayne Murphy. So uh, two runs, two runs scored on that. And uh, against a C pitcher, that's a walk if there's an F. If not, now see, I would say if not, then you go to a swing and then Dwayne Murphy is a batter C plus. And that's a walk if, it's, if he's an A, B, C, D, or F at walking and he is so I don't know why they didn't just say walk and so that is a walk and there he is in a ton of trouble here now Mitchell Page comes up and he gets a um, against a C pitcher he gets a fly out to center 
Nobody advancing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nope, he's an RBIA, so some so he does knock in a oh wait a minute. Yeah, and he so he does knock in a run. And that is a fly out. But it's an RBI, and the fourth run comes across, and uh, Dave Revering is up. And uh, Dave Revering against a C pitcher gets a fly out to right field. So the A's come up with four big runs in that third inning. And we got to see now the White Sox need to try to mount a comeback here. Assuming that I did it right, I will read the directions, but of course, you know, some people play with house rules. So I suppose my house rule is if um, it doesn't have one of the, the uh, right readings, then you just go to the next card um, in their batter section. So, um, but I will check the directions on that. And then hopefully the next one, if I did it wrong, I'll hopefully do it right the next time. So we got Ozzie Gian up. Batting against Lankford, he's a B, that's a line out to first base. Line out to three. Rudy Law is up. Um, that against a B pitcher, that's a swing. And in the swing section, you've got he is a batter C, so he gets a fly out to left. <coughs> And that brings up Harold Baines. And Harold Baines against a B pitcher gets a ground out to first base with a range check. And the uh, first baseman uh, is a range of C. And uh, that's an out. So Baines is out. And uh, um, ground out to three. No runs come in for the White Sox there. We go to the top of the fourth. Four nothing A's at this point. Um, by the way, I do want to mention, but you can hopefully see with the cards, the A's were 83 and 79 in 1980, and the White Sox were 85 and 77 in 1985. Against the C pitcher, you got a short fly to left field for Dave McKay. So, um, let's see, where is he? Right there. Um, short fly to left. Mario Guerrero's up. He gets a uh, strikeout. And that brings up Mike Heath. And Mike Heath gets a uh, strikeout. So... Bannister had a much better fourth than he had third. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. Uh, is that right? Yeah. With Carlton Fisk batting against a, a B pitcher in Langford. And he gets a walk if it's a... If, um, if he's a deer and F at walking. And he is not. So I guess then we go to the batter's, we refer to the batter's card, and he is a batter D, and that is a fly out to left. So one away. Fisk flies out to left. Ron Kittle is up. And against a B pitcher, he gets a ground out to first base with an error check. And the first baseman is an F as an error. We look at the F error, and it's an E2. So, two base error, Ron Kittle is on second. And then you got Greg Walker up, man at second, one out. And against a B pitcher, ground out to shortstop, two away. Greg Walker is out. Ground out six to three. And that brings up Scotty Fletcher. And he, against a B, gets a walk. 
So Fletcher walks and the White Sox have two on with two out. <clears throat> and Luis Salazar up. <clears throat> he gets a walk if he is a B, C, D, or F at walking, at walk. And um, he is not. He's an A at walking. So we're going to look at the batter section of the next card. And he is a batter D, which is a fly out to right field. So he flies out to right, and the White Sox come away with nothing there. We go to the top of the fifth in a 4 nothing game with Ricky Henderson up. Still, Bannister is out there against a C. It's a strikeout if he's an A strikeout. And he isn't. He's a B. So we're going to go to the batter section, and the batter, he is a batter A. And he gets a home run if he's an A, which he isn't. Otherwise, it's a deep fly to right, so he's out. Um, so, yeah. Fly out to nine, one away. Wayne Gross is up. He gets a swing against a C pitcher, and he is a batter B. He gets a walk if he's an A or B walk. He isn't, so we're going to check a, another batter, and he's a B and he gets a walk if he's an A, and he isn't. So then we check another one, and it's a home run if he's a, a, a B home run. Which he is not. Otherwise, it's a deep fly to center. So, fly out to eight, and there's two down, and Armas up. He gets a, a swing. <coughs> And he is a B batter. And that's a home run if he's an A plus at home run, which he isn't. Otherwise, it's a deep fly to center. So fly out to eight, and the A's go down one, two, three there. All except for that one inning where I may have done things uh, incorrectly, um, Floyd Bannister has pitched great. <laughs> other than the third inning. Tim Hewlett is up and uh, he gets a swing and he is a batter C plus. He gets a double if he's an A, B, C, or D at double and he is, so he does get a double. Hewlett with a double in the fifth here. Yep. Um, Ozzy Guillen comes up against a B pitcher. He gets a swing. Um, and he is a C plus batter. C plus gets a fly out to right. So, one down. Rudy Law is up. He gets a swing. And he is a batter C. And that is a ground out to third base, two away. Five to three. And that brings up Harold Baines. Hell Baines. And he gets a strikeout if, he, if the pitcher's an A, B, or C at strikeout. And he isn't. So it'll be on the batter card, on the next card. And he is a better A, and that's a short fly to center field. So, they get no runs again. This high-powered offense is being shut down by Rick Langford, which is really not hard to believe. Dwayne Murphy is up. He gets a strikeout if the pitcher is an A, B, C, or D <coughs> at strikeout, and he is. So, Dwayne Murphy strikes out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, strike out here in the top of the sixth. Mitchell Page is up. And he gets a swing. And he is a batter D. Batter D gets a ground out to first base. And that's two down. And that brings up Dave Revering. Dave Revering gets a swing. 
and the swing is he is a batter B plus. He gets a home run if he's a C at home run, and he is. Dave Revering hits it deep and out of the park. And they get another run. And that brings up Dave McKay. Dave McKay gets a swing. And he is a batter D. And he gets a strikeout if he's a B, C, D, or F at striking out people. And he is. And so Dave McKay strikes out. But the A's come up with another run in the sixth. And really, you know, if I made a mistake back there so far, it looks like it doesn't matter anyway, because we know that Revering hit a home run. And we do know that the White Sox have not been able to do anything against uh, Langford. So we got Carlton Fisk up. Carlton Fisk against a B pitcher swings. And he is a batter D, and he gets a strikeout if um, he's a D or an F at strikeout. And he is an, an F, so he does strike out. And we're in the sixth, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's a strikeout for Lankford, and that brings up Ron Kittle. Ron Kittle gets a swing. He is a batter D. He gets a walk if he's an A, B, C, or D at walk. And he is. So he does walk with one out. That brings up Greg Walker. Greg Walker. Greg Walker gets a swing. And he um, is a batter C. And that's a single one asterisk. So it's one out, a little one out rally going on possibly for the White Sox here. Scotty Fletcher comes up. He gets a swing. He is a batter B. And that is a home run if he's a B plus, which he is not. But if it not, he's a double two. So he knocks in a run with a double. Oh, no. That was only one. All right. So let's hope they get another run so that that other one can stay on the board. Luis Salazar is up, um, and uh, against a B, he gets a swing, and he is a D batter, and that is a home run D. Otherwise, it's a double three. Um, he is not a home run D, but uh, he does get a double, a two-run double. So that run did score, which is good, and so did the other one. And now the White Sox have three runs, and so they're, they're moving their way back into this game. Tim Hewlett is up. He gets a swing, and uh, he is a batter C+. Plus, and that's a fly out to left field. Fly out to seven. There's two down, and Ozzie Ginn up at the plate, trying to get that run in. <clears throat> he gets a swing. He is a C-plus batter, and he gets a fly out to center field. But the White Sox come up with three, and it is five to three. So Mario Guerrero comes up. And uh, you know what? We are going to the seventh. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take Bannister out. So Bannister only goes six innings. And I am going to bring in. Um, we're going to bring in Gene Nelson, and he is a pitcher C as well. Pitcher C with an endurance of three, and he has a rating of A and A on uh, 
on making errors and getting to the ball. So, uh, so yeah, Gene Nelson up and Gene Nelson pitching and um, Mario Guerrero up. And now we will flip the card against a C pitcher. He gets a walk if he's a B, C, D, or F at walking people. And he is. So Mario Guerrero walks. That brings up Mike Heath. He gets a swing batter. And he is a batter D. He gets a strikeout if he's a D or an F at striking people out. And he is. So, uh, Mike Heath strikes out and there's one down. And that brings up Ricky, Tricky Ricky Henderson. And he gets a swing batter. And he is an A batter. Gets a ground out. A ground out to the catcher. Okay, a ground out to the catcher with a uh, range check on the catcher. And that is Fisk. And he is a range of C. And a range of C is an out. So, um, I would assume he throws to first and the runner goes to second and there's two out. Um, so let's see. Uh, fielder's choice, we're going to call that with Wayne Gross coming up. And he uh, gets a swing and now I have to reshuffle. Even though it says it's a no shuffle deck, I'm still shuffling. And uh, the swing, he is a batter B. And he that is a single with two asterisks, so that knocks in a run. Is that right? Or was that guy not? Yeah, he was on second because he moved to second on the fielder's choice. So um, that is a single and allows that guy to score. And that brings up Tony Armas. And Tony Armas against the C pitcher gets a walk if he's a D or an F. Um, and he is. So that's all you need to know right there. Um, you got two runners on with Tony Armas walking. And that brings up Dwayne Murphy. And Dwayne Murphy against the C gets a fly out to center. So, fly out to eight, but the A's come up with another run in the seventh. And now they lead six to three as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning with Rudy Law up. Going to let Rank, Rick Langford at least pitch this inning. He has an endurance of eight, so he stays a B pitcher at least through eight. Um, you've got a pop out to second base. So, you don't need that. Rudy Law pops out to second. One away. Harold Baines is up uh, against a B. He gets a line out to second. Second baseman busy this inning. And Carlton Fisk comes up and he, against a B. He gets a fly out to left, but there's a range check on the left fielder. And he is in a range of A. So, that isn't going to be good. And he is out. So, uh, Fisk gets a, a fly out to uh, seven. And the A's go, or the uh, White Sox go one, two, three there. We go to the top of the eighth. Mitchell Page up against Nelson, who's still out there. Might as well be. Uh, against the C, gets a swing. He is a batter D. D is a single. So there is one out with Mitchell Page aboard on a single. That brings up Dave Revering. Dave Revering against the C, gets a walk if he's a C, D, or an F, and he is. So now there's two runners on with no outs. And that brings up Dave McKay. This 80 A's team is doing really well. Um, 
C is a walk D or NF, and he is, and so Gene Nelson has loaded the bases on a single and two walks with no outs, and Mario Guerrero, the Mario Guerrero up at the plate, uh, and he gets a walk if he's an F, which he is not, so we'll go to a batter section on him, and he is a batter D, and that is a hit by pitch, which knocks the run in. And they're going to get somebody warming up. The White Sox are going to get somebody warming up because Gene Nelson is just woefully not going to pitch well here. And we're going to get Dan Spillner up in the bullpen. That brings up, um, that brings up uh, Mike Heath. And against the C, he gets a fly out to left one away and is he an RBI no so no run comes in it's a fly out to left field one down and Ricky Henderson up and uh, he gets a fly out to right field two away um, Fly out to nine, and now we will bring Spillner into the game. And so Nelson only goes, I think, one and one and two thirds, and we bring in Spillner, and he is a C as well, and his range and all of that stuff is A and B, and he is an endurance of two. And that brings up Wayne Gross with two down, bases loaded. Against the C, he gets a ground out to second base. So, four to three. And the A's come up with another run in the eighth. And now lead seven to three with Ron Kittle up. And now we will replace Langford. Langford is only going to go um, seven innings. He ends up only going seven. We'll, we're happy to see him go, even though he has an endurance of eight. Going to bring somebody else in just to get a different look and let everybody get a look at somebody else pitching. And that's going to be... Um, that's going to be Jeff Jones is going to come in for the A's to pitch. And he only has an endurance of one. He is a pitcher C with an endurance of one and an A and an A at range and error. And that, now that brings up Ron Kittle with no outs and nobody on. Um, in the uh, in the eighth, yeah. And against the C, he gets a ground out to third base, but there is an error check. The third baseman is a C at errors, and uh, that is an out. So he goes, he bounces five to three, Kittle does, to lead off the eighth. Greg Walker is up. He gets a uh, line out to shortstop. Line out to six, and that brings up Scott Fletcher. And Scott Fletcher against the C gets a pop out to short. And the White Sox are effectively shut down there. We go to the top of the ninth. <coughs> top of the ninth with Tony Armas up. And against the C, he gets a uh, pitcher C, he gets a strikeout. So Armas with the K. Dwayne Murphy up. Dwayne Murphy gets a strikeout. So Spillner strikes out the first two batters he faces, and Mitchell Page steps in to face him, and he gets a strikeout, and Dan Spillner strikes out the side. Would be exciting, except for the fact that the White Sox need a hell of a lot of runs right here to come back. 
um, because the score is, in fact, seven to three, and they are going to need um, four runs. The first batter is Salazar going up against Jeff Jones. He is a C, that is a walk. If he's a CD or an F at walking, and he is, so Salazar leads off by getting on. That's a beginning. Tim Hewlett's up, and uh, he is a C, and he gets a walk if he's an F at walking. And he is, in fact, a walking F. So that puts the first two batters on. And maybe they can get this four runs. Ozzie Gian is up. He is a C pitcher. It's a deep fly to center, one away. Um, so fly out to eight. That brings up Rudy Law. Against a C, gets a fly out to center field. And that is the two down. And going to the meat of the lineup, we have Harold Baines with two on and two out. And he gets a fly out to right field, and that ends the game. And your final score is uh, the A's of 1980 get seven. And the 1985 White Sox get three. Uh, again, I'll have to check the rules, see if I messed up in the third inning. Uh, but even if I did, it looks like the A's probably, at worst, the A's would have tied. Because I think I did everything else. Uh, I think pretty much every other inning I did uh, correctly. So, um, at worst, it would have been a tie going into the top of the tenth. Which, actually, it would have been nicer... But the A's win it 7-3, to three, and that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.